So I wanted to show how to bring in your hero candle or replace any one of these meshes that you might not have liked. I actually decided to just make a hero candle and then add it. So um, here's the candle and it's nothing much to look at. What you want to make sure you change is that it's a small prop if you're using LODs because it's tiny. And then what uh, we'll do is we'll go to the material, we'll make a material instance. I'll just call this hero. And then what we just need to do is, this is the bakes normal for that. And we'll just replace the normal here. <clears throat> and now on the mesh, we'll add that material. So it's not going to look great here because it's so bright. Let's not worry about it. Mesh. Save. All right, so when we go to, let's just do it. Well, so these are the, what the names are. We'll just add a hero. Hero, we'll just call it hero one, although you probably wouldn't have a lot of heroes, hero candles. Uh, <clears throat> and then what we need to do is we need to, so all the candles are just in a list in the construction script in the local variables. So here's the list. If you want to replace any candle, you could just replace it. It would just have the same name. So if you wanted to replace it, you would go to the, so these names match these numbers so that you get the one-to-one -one, um, of name to a type of candle descriptor. So what we'll do here is we'll add one more that will be the hero mesh. So this is in the in the ninth place. So because the random generator still stays to eight, it will still only randomize these numbers. So we don't have to worry about this accidentally popping in. And um, even though it has its own LEDs, it I, I feel like it's stylistically a little different. So I wouldn't really want it to blend in with the rest of them. <coughs> Uh, I'd probably be fine, but um, just for the sake of efficiency and optimization, it doesn't. So, all right. The other thing is we need the wick location. So these are all the locations of the where the flame will appear. So we're going to make one more. Um, but here's the tricky part. We, what, we'll just detach this to the construction script so we can actually see if we can. Great. I was hoping that that was still selected. Zoom into the candle Let's hit compile so that that all right so what we'll do is we <clears throat> get the wick location and all I'm doing is I'm trying to like re like right about you know where the top of the wick is and then I just need to copy the location go back to the construction local local variable <clears throat> and paste it into the local variable. Compile, oh, well, let's that. reconnect this, compile. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what the original was, but uh, maybe I'll just put this back. So that's all we should have to do to have this working um, with my own candle. So the only thing to call out is that the candle also matches its second UV channel with um, the other candles. So these candles have a second UV. Ch so the first UV channel is its layout. So there's two uh, materials. So this is the wick, this is the candle. And then, you know, it, so this matches basically in height, the same thing. So let's now just try to swap this to hero one. And then when we hit play, you've got a more detailed candle. Oh, don't do that. Lovely. It's, uh, I mean, do I love it? It's, I don't know. I would, I would like to do a height map that's based on uh, 
the depth so it even would fade out this way, but that's just kind of overbuilding it to the degree where it's probably not useful. But anyway, well, that's how you can add your own mesh. I'll include this mesh along with it. So if you call that a hero mesh. Um, the reason that the wax doesn't go to the bottom is to make it more versatile. If it pulls um, then and it's close to an edge, the pool would like float over the edge. So you just want to keep, I wanted to keep it more versatile. It can now all still go into like a stand and it's just kind of more useful in general. So anyway, hope that helps.